Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. As believers, we stand on the unshakable truth that our justification is through faith alone. This faith grants us peace with God, a peace that is not subject to the shifting sands of human opinion or the changing tides of cultural acceptance. This peace is through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has secured our access to God's grace, a grace that firmly establishes us. This passage teaches us that our faith is not passive. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, looking forward to the future fulfillment of His promises. This hope is not wishful thinking, but a confident expectation based on the surety of God's Word. This is echoed in Revelation chapter 21 verse 4, where God promises to wipe away every tear and eliminate death and sorrow. Moreover, our faith is tested and proven in the furnace of affliction. We glory in tribulations because we understand they serve a divine purpose. Tribulation produces perseverance, a steadfastness in our faith that cannot be mimicked by ease and comfort. Perseverance shapes our character, refining us into the image of Christ, as emphasized in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 7. This character fuels our hope, a hope that is anchored in the immutable love of God. This hope is not a fleeting emotion, but a steadfast assurance grounded in the love of God poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. This divine love is not based on our merit, but on God's sovereign grace, reaffirming that our salvation is secure. Therefore, as Christians, we must embrace our trials, understanding that they are tools in the hand of God to mold us into His likeness and to strengthen our hope. This hope does not disappoint, for it is founded on the unchanging character of God and the eternal truth of His Word. Stand firm, be bold, and do not apologize for the hope that is within you. This hope is not for the faint-hearted, but for those who trust unwaveringly in the sovereign will of God, knowing that His plans are perfect and His love is everlasting. Verses 1 through 5 laid the foundation for understanding our justified state through faith, the peace we have with God, and the hope that is forged through tribulation. Now, as we move into verses 6 through 11, we delve deeper into the magnitude of God's love demonstrated through the sacrificial death of Christ and the assurance of our salvation. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 through 11 declares, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Reflect on the reality of our condition before Christ's intervention. We were without strength, utterly powerless to save ourselves, enslaved to sin, and deserving of God's righteous wrath. Yet in this helpless state, Christ died for the ungodly. This act was not for the righteous or the good, but for those who were his enemies, underscoring the incomprehensible depth of God's love. Consider the rarity of sacrificial love among humans. It is uncommon for someone to die even for a righteous person. Yet 
Christ's sacrifice was for those mired in sin, illustrating the unparalleled nature of divine love. This love is not contingent on our merit, but is a sovereign act of grace, as emphasized in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Having been justified by His blood, we are saved from the wrath to come. This salvation is not just a future hope, but a present reality. The blood of Christ is the means by which we are declared righteous, securing us from the wrath of God, as stated in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, where those not found in the book of life are cast into the lake of fire. Our reconciliation with God was accomplished while we were His enemies. If God reconciled us through the death of His Son when we were opposed to Him, how much more secure is our salvation now that we are His children? This assurance is bolstered by the resurrection life of Christ. His victory over death guarantees our eternal life, as proclaimed in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 22. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Finally, we rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This joy is not a fleeting emotion, but a profound celebration of the reconciliation we have received. Our restored relationship with God is a source of continual joy, underscoring the certainty of our salvation. The depth of God's love, demonstrated through Christ's sacrificial death and His victorious resurrection, provides an unshakable foundation for our faith. We stand justified, saved from wrath, and reconciled to God, rejoicing in the eternal hope secured by our Lord Jesus Christ. Stand firm in these truths, unwavering and unapologetic, knowing that our faith is rooted in the sovereign grace of God. Verses 1-11 through 11 has established the foundation of our justification through faith, the peace we have with God, the hope birthed in tribulation, and the assurance of our salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, we transition to verses 12 through 17, where the Apostle Paul contrasts the impact of Adam's sin with the surpassing grace found in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5 verses 12 through 17 states, Therefore, just as through one man's sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. Paul begins by highlighting the devastating impact of Adam's sin. Through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin. This death, both physical and spiritual, spread to all men because all have sinned. This universal truth is foundational to understanding our need for salvation. From Adam to Moses, even without the law, death reigned, demonstrating the pervasive and destructive nature of sin. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Adam is a type of Christ, but where Adam brought sin and death, Christ brings grace and life. 
the free gift of grace through Jesus Christ far surpasses the offense of Adam. While Adam's sin brought death to many, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of Jesus Christ abounded to many. This is a stark contrast highlighting the magnificence of God's grace over the severity of sin. The judgment from Adam's single offense resulted in condemnation. This condemnation is not just a theoretical concept, but a tangible reality that has plagued humanity since the fall. However, the free gift of grace, despite many offenses, results in justification. This justification is not earned, but freely given through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It is reiterated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Furthermore, Paul emphasizes the reign of death through Adam's offense. Death's dominion is undeniable, but it is not the final word. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ. This reign is not only a future promise, but a present reality, empowering believers to live victoriously over sin and death. As proclaimed in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. The comparison between Adam and Christ magnifies the glorious grace of God. Through Adam, sin and death entered the world, condemning all. But through Jesus Christ, grace abounds, bringing justification and life. This truth is the bedrock of our faith, affirming that where sin increased, grace abounded much more. Stand firm in this grace, unyielding and unapologetic, knowing that in Christ we have received the ultimate victory over sin and death. Verses 1 through 17 has laid a powerful foundation of our justification, the peace and hope we have in Christ, and the incredible contrast between the devastating impact of Adam's sin and the surpassing grace found in Jesus Christ. Now, as we transition to verses 18 and 19, we see the culmination of this argument, emphasizing the universal effects of both Adam's disobedience and Christ's obedience. Romans chapter 5 verses 18 and 19 declares, Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Adam's offense brought judgment and condemnation to all men. This is a universal reality, an inescapable truth. Every human being born into this world is born under the condemnation brought about by Adam's sin. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. The consequence of Adam's disobedience is death, both physical and spiritual, and it reigns over humanity without exception. Yet the glorious truth of the gospel is that through one man's righteous act, the free gift of justification has come to all men. This righteous act is the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross, where he bore the wrath of God that we deserved. Through his obedience unto death, the penalty for sin was paid in full. This is not a potential salvation offered to all, but an effective salvation for those who believe. As John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Adam's disobedience made many sinners. This inherited sin, nature is evident in our thoughts, actions and desires. We are born sinners, and this sin nature condemns us before a holy God. However, by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. The obedience of Jesus Christ his perfect life, and his atoning death provide the righteousness we could never attain on our own. 
This righteousness is imputed to us through faith, as stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This passage underscores the absolute necessity of the gospel. Without the righteous act of Christ, we remain in our sin, condemned and without hope. But with Christ, we have justification of life, a life that is not just eternal, but abundant here and now. This justification is not by our works, but by the free gift of God's grace, received through faith in Jesus Christ. The contrast between Adam and Christ is a stark reminder of our desperate need for a Savior and the incredible provision God has made through His Son. Adam's disobedience brought universal condemnation, but Christ's obedience brings the free gift of justification and life. Stand firm in this truth, unyielding and unapologetic, proclaiming the righteousness of Christ and the eternal hope we have in Him. This is the heart of the Gospel, the foundation of our faith and the assurance of our salvation. Verses 1 through 19 have laid out the profound truths of our justification by faith, the peace we have with God, the surpassing grace that abounds over Adam's sin, and the righteousness we receive through Jesus Christ. As we transition to verses 20 and 21, the Apostle Paul concludes this chapter with a powerful statement about the purpose of the law and the overwhelming triumph of grace. Romans chapter 5 verses 20 and 21 says, Moreover the law entered that the offence might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The law was given to reveal the extent of sin. It was not introduced to provide a means of salvation, but to make clear the depth and seriousness of human transgression. As it says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 24, Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The law exposes our sinfulness, showing us how far we fall short of God's perfect standard. The offence abounds, making our need for a saviour unmistakably clear. Yet where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. This is the heart of the gospel. God's grace is greater than our sin. No matter how deep the sin, God's grace is deeper still. This truth is echoed in 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. The grace of God is not just sufficient, it is superabundant, overwhelming the power of sin and bringing salvation to the worst of sinners. Sin reigned in death, bringing destruction and separation from God. The reign of sin is evident in the brokenness and suffering in the world, but the reign of grace is far greater. Through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, grace reigns to eternal life. This righteousness is not our own, but is imputed to us by faith in Jesus Christ, as stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Grace reigns through righteousness to eternal life. This is the ultimate victory, eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This eternal life is not just a future hope, but a present reality, transforming us and empowering us to live in the victory that Christ has won. As it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verses 20 and 21 underscore the triumphant power of God's grace. The law reveals our sin, but grace overcomes it. Sin may have reigned in death, but grace now reigns through righteousness to eternal life. Stand firm in this truth, unyielding and unapologetic, 
proclaim the overwhelming grace of God and the eternal life we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the power of the gospel, the hope of our salvation, and the assurance of our victory. Romans chapter 5 lays bare the stark realities of our spiritual condition and the unparalleled grace offered through Jesus Christ. Let's delve into these truths with a sense of urgency and gravity, for they are matters of eternal consequence. God's holiness and justice are absolute. He is of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness, as Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 declares. God's standard of holiness is perfect, and His justice demands that sin be punished. This is not a negotiable truth, it is the unyielding character of God. Humanity is utterly sinful and separated from God. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 states, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. Every person is born into sin, inheriting the rebellion of Adam. Our thoughts, actions, and desires are corrupted, making us enemies of a holy God. This sin incurs the wrath of God, a righteous and just response to our rebellion. The consequences of sin are dire. Sin reigns in death, both physical and spiritual. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 warns, For the wages of sin is death. This is not merely physical death, but eternal separation from God, a torment described in Revelation chapter 20 verse 15, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is the just punishment for our sins, an eternity of suffering away from the presence of God. Yet in the midst of this terror, there is hope. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, took on human flesh and lived a sinless life. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 proclaims, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. On the cross, Jesus bore the full wrath of God that we deserved. He became our substitute, satisfying the demands of God's justice. His resurrection from the dead is the ultimate victory over sin and death. Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. The resurrection proves that Jesus has conquered death, providing the way for us to be reconciled to God. The call to you is clear. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins and place your faith in Him. Acts chapter 17 verse 30 commands, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. This repentance is not just sorrow for sin, but a complete turning away from it and turning towards Christ. Through faith in Jesus, you can have assurance of salvation. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 declares, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This justification is a free gift of grace, not earned by works, but received through faith in Jesus Christ. In Christ, you are given new life through the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 11 assures, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. This new life empowers you to live in victory over sin and walk in righteousness. Finally, there is the eternal hope and promise of Christ's return. Jesus will come again, as Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 declares, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. This is the blessed hope for all who trust in him, the assurance of eternal life in His presence. Do not delay. None of us are promised tomorrow. We are all part of the ultimate statistic. Ten out of ten will die. The wrath of God is real and His judgment is imminent. But His grace is available now. 
repent, believe, and be saved. Embrace the transforming power of Christ's sacrifice, His resurrection, and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Secure your eternal hope in Jesus Christ, the only Savior and Lord. This is the gospel, the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. Amen.